the church, you can make a note on there. <clears throat> if you're watching from home, please take a minute to register your attendance. You may do so at 1UMCM.com, which is the numeral 1UMCM.com on a register link. Or you can leave us a Facebook message, send a text to let somebody know you were watching so we can make sure and get a record of who all has watched this service. Big thank yous to everyone who has participated in our community snack basket appreciation project that we're doing right now. Uh, we've had enough snacks to fill 28 baskets to overflowing. So thank you, thank you for bringing items in, for packing, and delivering those uh, big blessings throughout our community. Most of those baskets have been delivered. During the month of October, uh, beginning this Wednesday, Pastor Chris will lead a study on how to approach the Bible with confidence. It'll be 7.15 p.m. on Wednesday nights in the Fellowship Hall. So if you have questions about that, let Pastor Chris know. Uh, the mark your calendars beginning this coming Wednesday, 7.15 uh, in the Fellowship Hall. Today, Richard will be holding a 30 to 45 minute seminar on internet and computer security in plain English in the sanctuary a few minutes after church today. So we've had a few members of our church get hacked recently and he'd like to give you some tools and skills to keep that from happening to you. Uh, the seminar will also be live streamed so you can watch it at home or watch it later uh, if you're not available after church today. That's in here in the sanctuary right after church. As always, our Blessing Box and Good Shepherd Center continue to uh, need donations, uh, canned food or other uh, non-perishable items, as well as hygiene products or uh, snack foods for kids. Uh, grab some as you shop for your family's groceries. You can drop them by the blessing box in our parking lot down on Teleco Street anytime, or you can bring them here for the Good Shepherd Center and we will make sure they get them. Do we have any other announcements? Yes, Greg. Right. Uh, the United Methodist men will meet next Sunday at 9 a.m. in the fellowship hall. Breakfast will be provided. All men are invited. Okay, great. Next Sunday, 9 a.m., the United Methodist men will meet in the fellowship hall. Breakfast will be provided. I'd say we'll smell it coming into church that morning. So, uh, next Sunday, 9 a.m., United Methodist men. We have changed the conference choir practice right now, at least, till 6 o'clock on Wednesdays. We know it, and we want to make sure everybody else knows it. So come and join us. We're working on Christmas and some anthems and things. Six o'clock. We're going to try that. Then we'll get everybody home a little bit earlier and um, everything here. It starts to get dark earlier and everything. So just six. Remember, six o'clock. All right. Anything else? Okay. Take a minute to greet each other. If you're here in person, give each other a wave. Don't forget our guys back there in the sound booth. We've got Cole, Tim. Richard and Steve, thank you all for your diligent work. Our folks at home can see you on that camera above the choir room. May the peace of Christ be with you.
If you have no money, but you're hungry, come and receive wine and milk without a price tag. Why do you spend money on what does not nourish you? Why do you work for what does not nurture you? Listen, come and eat healthy food that will delight you. Come and partake in the spirit that will give you life. Become a witness of God's free gift of grace to all people. They will come running to you because your covenant God will raise you up, transform you, and make you shine. Join us in our opening song. We praise thee, O God, our Redeemer. The words may not be familiar, but the tune is very familiar.
Uh, would you invite you to be in prayer for the family of Dennis Sapples, who's a friend of Angela Allen's? Also be in prayer for Frank Butch McKenzie and family. Butch will be having surgery, um, I think in a couple of weeks, uh, for, for a heart issue. Joe Curtis just turned 90 and continues to need our prayers. Also want to invite you to pray for the family of Johnny Manis, who's a friend of the, Miel the Maori family. And Judy Maori's nephew, Dustin C., continues to need our prayers. Dustin is a young man who's been battling COVID, and COVID issues uh, for many months and has new complications that have arisen. Bruce Christopher is asking for prayers for a golfing buddy, uh, Chuck M. Bowden, and, uh, and Dennis Thornburg, who have health issues. And uh, Lois Green is asking for prayers for daughter Patty's in-laws, Carol Lehman and Jim Lehman, who have serious health issues. Also, please pray for uh, Karen Balsinger, Alan's wife, who recently had a fall that required surgery for her injuries. And also, there's a, a place, I think, in our in our list for unspoken prayer requests. I bring this up every two or three or four weeks, just as a reminder that there are prayer requests that maybe we don't feel comfortable speaking about, but that still need our prayers. So I invite you, there's power in prayer. So I invite you to pray into those things as well. If you would like uh, to join me in kneeling up here at the rail in prayer, I want to invite you to do so uh, this morning. If you've got something on your heart or on your mind, that you're going through yourself, uh, and it's just better to be in, on your knees in prayer. I want to invite you to, to join me. Let us go to God in prayer again. Compassionate God, you are good to all. Help us to trust in you. To share that we what we have with a hungry world. We pray for your church universal, that our relations with other religions, especially your people, the Jews, may be respectful and abounding in steadfast love. Enable us to join with people of all faiths to work for the well-being of all your children. Jesus said, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. We pray for the earth and all the creatures who look to you for their food in due season. And we do our part, restoring the balance of your creation, even our commitment to follow Jesus in ministries that feed and serve others. Jesus said they need not go away. You give them something to eat. Pray for all the people of the world their ethnic groups, nations, and leaders, that wars will cease, that the hungry will be fed and become a priority, that refugees will return home in safety and peace. Jesus said they need not go away. You give them something to eat. We pray for all those who suffer from physical ills and for all those who wrestle with you personal identity and spiritual peace. And they find their truth without money, peace without cost. Jesus said they need not go away. You give them something to eat. Now in the silence, let's offer the prayers of our hearts. Gracious and merciful God, abounding in steadfast love, we join our voices with all that you have made, speaking your praises and blessing your name. We also join our voices with all other disciples who are praying in your Son's name this morning. With boldness, let us offer the prayer that you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us 
us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please join us in our hymn of meditation, Spirit of the Living God.
say this a lot, uh, but as we enter into our time of scripture reading, I do want to invite you to open up the Bible uh, on, your, on your phone or in front of you. Um, we're going to take a look at the text, and as I read it, I want to invite you to, well, try to envision it in your mind. I hope that you do that every week. Sometimes y'all don't. It's okay. Sometimes we don't. Um, but I do want y'all to pay attention um, to this reading for this morning. It comes from Matthew 14, verses 13 through 21. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot to the town. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them. He cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away, so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves. Gave them to the disciples. The disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. The word of God. For the people of God. Thanks be to God. Make sure you put out extra cottage cheese. To that I said, extra? Are you sure? Yes, definitely. Put it all out. I responded back, but we have ten big tubs. The old man I was speaking to cursed under his breath looked around towards the trucks and shouted, Is that really all we have? No one answered. So he said harshly, Just go ahead and put it all out. It's not going to last long. Anyway, we were setting up to feed the homeless at the end of one of the hottest days in July underneath a bridge in downtown Knoxville. And I was volunteering with the Lost Sheep Ministry, which has a weekly meal for those who need a free meal, and those who may need basic medical care and clothing. I only volunteered at a couple of these feedings. But I found out that the drug guy that I was working next to had volunteered with Lost Sheep every week for about a decade. And as we worked to set up, I asked him, why cottage cheese? I can't hardly stand cottage <laughs> cheese. <laughs> Even on a winter day, I don't like to eat it. He said, imagine if you hadn't had anything cool to eat or drink for days in this heat. Folks on the street can go a week or more without getting good protein or <coughs> fat. So they crave it. Cottage cheese always goes first in the summer. Then as an afterthought, he said, it's like manna from heaven. As I stood there thinking about what he said, a flurry of activity started. A prayer was given over a bulwark. And folks started moving through the line to get their food. After an hour, all were fed. The cottage cheese did go first, as predicted. And there were many who were disappointed that we ran out. <coughs> the dust fell upon us. We began to tear down tables and chairs to put them away for the next week. As we worked, I asked that same man from earlier about why he comes out to volunteer every week like clockwork. I said, it's obvious that you love being out here and you love doing this. So what gets you here every week? Without missing a beat, he said, because Jesus fed others and got 5,000 people to feed one another so that they all got full. And he said, I figure I'm just doing my part to accomplish what he wanted his followers to do while he was here. As I stood there holding some metal holding chairs in both hands, I said, wait a minute, are you talking about Jesus' miracle where he fed 5,000 pe people with five loaves and two fish? Like where he multiplied all that stuff. And he yelled back, 
No. That's not how I figure it happened. Jesus didn't magically multiply all that stuff like Houdini doing a magic show. Then, using the dirty folding table in front of us, he broke down the scripture that we just heard with his hands on the table. He said, Jesus put people in the graves and told his disciples to divide up what little food they had to share it. Because his disciples shared what little they had, it inspired everybody else to share from what they brought with them, which is why there was so much left over. Everybody shared with everybody else. And as I stood there, spellbound, with my mouth open, and forgetting that I was holding folding chairs in my hands, he broke down the table he was using quickly and said, getting people to share like that, that's the miracle. Then he turned on his heel and walked away from me, table in hand, and I was left to ponder his words. This conversation happened when I was 17, and it has stuck with me ever since then, because it's the first time that I ever heard a different interpretation of feeding of the Bible. We know that it was an important moment in Jesus' ministry because it is one of the few stories that happens in every gospel. Now, I told you all about this last week. I hope that you did your homework, that you went through and read a little bit uh, of the story from one of the, from one of the gospel writers. Biblical scholars, and we're all biblical scholars because we're Christians. We're supposed to be. We're supposed to read scripture well, right? Biblical scholars believe that this event actually definitely happened. Because it's in all four accounts, it had an impact on the people who saw it. So we know more than likely that this event occurred. Just before the story we read, Jesus has gotten the news that John the Baptist had just been killed. And he was killed by King Herod. And so Jesus, in all likelihood, is in mourning. Which is why he is looking for some time to be alone in a deserted place. He gets on a boat and paddles out to a quiet place on the water. But the crowds, we read, they follow him along the shoreline. The text says that upon seeing the amount of people gathered, Jesus has compassion on them. He comes ashore to cure their sick. As the sun goes down, the disciples who arrive encourage Jesus to send the people away to find something to eat because night will fall soon. They are far from any towns. Jesus says in response, you give them something to eat. But the disciples protest in their response. We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. What do you expect us to do? Bring them here to me, Jesus says. Then he has the crowd dividing the groups to sit on the grassy shore, and he looks up to heaven to bless the loaves and the fish. Prayer. He gives some to each of the disciples, and they share with the divided up crowd. Then something very interesting happens in your Bibles that I want you to pay attention to. The text jumps down, and all ate and were filled. Then the disciples took up what was left over. There were 12 baskets full of broken pieces of bread. 5,000 people were fed in all the text said. The story is clear. It's a miraculous feeding that falls in line with many of Jesus' other miracles. But I can't help but ask myself, what happens between verse 19 and verse 20? That space, that moment where Jesus shares, and then all are filled. Well, some have said that, this, that within this gap, an amazing miracle happens that shows the power of Christ to do things that go beyond our own human capacity. That this gap in the text signifies that he multiplied the loaves and fish through his blessing and through his power <coughs> as God on earth. This would certainly fit with his other miracles, like healing the sick, turning water into wine, or resurrecting the dead. Others have suggested that this story, that this story was sacramental in nature. So that's kind of the foreshadowing of the, the, uh, 
the Holy Communion, or the Last Supper. And so, as Jesus shares just a little bit of bread, because he blesses it, folks become spiritually filled in that moment. Other folks, like the man from the story at the beginning, say that something unique and unexpected happens between verse 19 and verse 20. That the crowd, upon seeing Jesus bless and break and share what little bit of food the disciples had, the crowd, upon seeing this, becomes inspired to share in the same way. So then in the end, you get 12 full baskets left over. Everyone gets their fill from what was offered by everyone else. What a vision, right? It wouldn't be outside the realm of the possibility for the story to happen this way. It was common practice in the first century to pack bread and other provisions for a long journey. Much like we might pack snacks and food for a day hike in the woods. And we know that the people travel a long way to find Jesus. So could this have happened between verse 19 and verse 20? Maybe. As much fun as it is to interpret, bring, theorize about this, as scholars have done, <coughs> excuse me, as scholars have done for millennia, I don't think that is the point of this story. Whether we believe the feeding of the 5,000 was a miracle, something sacrament-like, or a moment of sharing. None of this really matters without Jesus' explicit request that he makes to his disciples. Remember what he says when he sees the crowd's need. You give them something to eat. In this statement, we see Jesus trying to empower his disciples to respond with immediacy to the people's need. Christ is saying, we don't have to wait. We don't have to send them away. We can feed them right now with what we have. I love the boldness and creativity of Jesus here in this moment. But how did the disciples respond? You remember? They protest, right? They push back. But we could have five loaves and two fish. This made me think of the many ways that I and protest in my own mind and heart that I recognize a need. We only have five loaves and two fish. <coughs> well, I can't pull up to help that guy, already late as it is. I can help that homeless couple. I don't have any cash on it. I could give them something, but they'll probably just use it for bad things. They probably have a mental illness or an addiction. What difference can I make? Well, one of I don't know where to start. I think we have all been tempted one time or another to protest like this, like the disciples do, if we are honest with ourselves. As I was thinking about my own excuses, I came across a quote this week from the late Mother Teresa uh, from the book A Simple Path. It reads, we are all God's children. So, it's important to share God's gifts. Do not worry about why problems exist in the world. Just respond to people's needs. I think this quote is perfect for us this morning. And a perfect partner to go with our scripture for today. Jesus' posture with his disciples was to say, in effect, look at what you have and bless the world with God will take care of the rest. Now, whether God multiplies loaves or inspires others to share bread doesn't matter. What does matter is our willingness to do our part that we are given the chance to act as Christ's hands and feet in the world. To feed, bless, and to care however or wherever we can. And let God take care of the rest. I think that is what Christ was trying to get at in the story and what he was trying to teach his own disciples in that moment. The first step to this stuff is to be aware, wary of our own excuses, reservations, push against those. 
as we go back into the world, back to this worship service, as we go back into the world, into our lives as disciples, and as we begin a new week, I pray that we would lean into those moments where it is obvious that we need to be the ones to step up and to step in to be blessed and care for and love and come alongside and even boldly stand up for those who are vulnerable and hurting. Do we not protest the opportunities we are given to serve, but boldly act on trusting God along the way? Who knows? If we do this enough, we might just find that we are part of something miraculous. Even as miraculous as feeding 5,000 people five loaves of bread and two fish. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, we're going to enter into another feeding, another meal here. Um, Holy Communion. If you have not, um, if you have uh, not got one of these, uh, now's the time to grab one. Um, and if you all are worshiping with us online, if you want to have bread or water, bread and juice, any kind of juice will work for you to celebrate this meal with us. Uh, in the Methodist Church, we believe in an open table. That means that no matter who you are or where you come from or what you've done, you are welcome to have communion with us today. Uh, unfortunately, we are going to be taking communion with these. I've learned to love these. <laughs> okay? But I don't love them, right? I am so excited about the day when I will be able to have a moment with each of you as we share the sacrament together. I have not had that. I haven't had that kind of communion in like a year and a half. And I'm so looking forward to that. Hopefully that will come soon. I'm going to offer a couple of prayers. Um, what I'm about to do, y'all, for those of you who are new, that's okay. I'm about to offer a long prayer. The first one is a prayer of confession. As we go into our communion moment, it's important for us to be honest with God and to think about moments when we've missed the mark since the last time we were together in worship or even the last time we had communion. And then I'm going to offer a prayer. That prayer is meant for us together. I'm saying a lot of words, but it's my prayer to God to bless your elements. And you have a part in that too. I want, to, I want to encourage you to offer your words with boldness, like I talked about earlier at the beginning of our service. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have failed in true love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Free us to pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died while we were yet saved. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks to Christ. It is right. And a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name. Join in the unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, 
to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when he had saved your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, he gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by one in the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this all of you. This is, this is my the blood. This is, sorry. <laughs> I was looking up, y'all. I was looking at my notes. I'm sorry. Drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. As we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ is come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit, Lord God, on us, gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we shall feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours. Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Now I invite you to consume a piece of bread with me. This is the body of Christ broken for you. Now let us drink from the cup which we have before us. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Now that we have received the sacrament as one body joined together here in this place and virtually. Let us pray together. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit. We give ourselves to others. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Now I invite you to join me. Please stand. Join me in singing our closing hymn.
I hope you come back next week. And a little note, I was told by a few of you that last week I didn't know where I was or what time it was or what month it was. Because apparently I told y'all that Halloween was in August. And <laughs> all I told you. <laughs> and my wife said, well, they figured it out. I'm sure they know. <laughs> that we are having a trunk or treat on October 30th, uh, beginning at about 4.30. And it'll be a fun time. There's an article about it in our newsletter. I hope that uh, our planning team's gonna be meeting the next week about that, to chat about it. Um, we may invite many of you to be a part of that in some way, and I hope that you will. It should be a fun opportunity for us to be in ministry and to welcome our community around us. Also, last thing, the class that I'm going to be starting to teach this coming Wednesday evening. This is basically just a class for anybody who's ever felt intimidated by Scripture. Period. Basically, it's just an opportunity for us to say together and to kind of learn some new ways to approach Scripture, both to study it and just to read it um, at your leisure. So if you're interested in that, I would invite you to come join me uh, in the Fellowship Hall, 715 this coming Wednesday for the next three or four weeks, the next four weeks. Um, if you want to drop in, if you can't come this week, you want to drop in, that's fine too. Um, proceed now the benediction. Let us go forth in this place. Um, let us go forth in this place, uh, returning no one evil for evil, but only good. Let us go forth with the love of God the Father, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>